Now you probably clicked on this video thinking, what the hell? You traded your $10,000 Polk Audio SVS system for some $220 Bose home theater in a box speaker? From the late 90s, are you crazy? You know what they say, no highs, no lows, must be Bose, right? Fair enough, allow me to explain. Yo, KP Sky here, and welcome back to what will be a new short series called Spitting Two Weeks with a Bose System. And in this series will consist of several parts. The first part, which you are watching now, is of initial setup and why I chose these particular Bose speakers. Part two will be the music test, playing every type of music you can think of and seeing how they perform on my Ranch preprocessor and Monolith 7 amplifier. Part three will be a movie demo, how do they sound when I put them against high octane movies like Transformers or Endgame? And part four will be what is it like to spend two weeks with the Bose system. Sound interesting? Every Wednesday will be a new episode. As I unbox the Bose system, I'll share with you how I picked this model of Bose speakers, the Acoustic Mass 15. When I was looking for used Bose speakers, it was actually a very tough task. If you know anything about Bose in the past, you know they have like 77 different models of Acoustic Mass systems with very minimal difference. <laughs> I mean, there's Acoustic Mass 5, Series 1, 2, and 3. Acoustic Mass 6, Series 1, Series 2, and Series 3. Acoustic Mass 7, 10, 15, 25, Series 1, and 2, and 3. And each have small differences between them. It's like Bose didn't do firmware software updates, they just made you buy a whole new system for every change they made. But anyway, I bought the Acoustic Mass 15 on eBay for 160 plus shipping. I chose this model because it was the highest model in the Acoustic Mass line that I could find without a ridiculous price tag. I didn't too much care for the condition of the speakers, I just wanted them to work. The Acoustic Mass 15 is close to the top of the line of the Acoustic Mass series, which stopped selling around 2006. I chose an older Bose because Bose didn't get the reputation from their recent lineup. It was the older models that gave them the biggest name in the audio industry. Whether it's a good name or a bad name, I'll leave that up to you. Now these speakers are small. I even gilled at the cute little size. But what I'm most curious about is how the subwoofer performs. <clears throat> I mean, a Custom Mass module. I believe there's at least two six and a quarter drivers inside, and they are active drivers. This is also a powered subwoofer, so I will be hooking up directly to my Marantz. I hope it can handle it. Now let me answer the question that everyone is wondering. K Pace guy, why in the did you swap your speakers out for Bose? Bose of all things? I have never heard of Bose system, at least not outside their showroom, but never in a home environment. We all know Bose is the most despised company name out there. So I wanted to get my hands on a Bose system and try it out for myself. I want to disconnect all my current speakers, unplug the subwoofers and try to see why some people swear by bows or swear at bows. For two weeks, I'm gonna sit and enjoy or not enjoy different types of music, watch all types of movies, and have some casual time playing games and watching YouTube on the Bose Acoustic Mass 15, and form my own opinion on the system. Experience firsthand if it's as bad as what people say or not. Now I'm actually cheating the system just a little bit. On the back of the subwoofer is where all the connections are supposed to be made. All five satellite speakers are supposed to be plugged into the subwoofer, and then the subwoofer is going to be plugged into the amplifier, which I'll show you guys in just a moment. But I'm going to actually wire the satellite speakers directly to the monolith. And the reason why I'm going to do this is because I want to hear exactly how these speakers sound. Plugging them up to the monolith will expose these speakers for their best or for their worst. We'll have to find out. 
Now there are two reasons why I think Bose wants you to plug the satellite speakers directly to the subwoofer. One is so that you can't use the speakers with any other system other than their own. And two, because I think the subwoofer is doing some type of DSP equalization to the satellite speakers to make them sound better than what they really are. I think the subwoofer takes some of the frequencies and information and kind of filters it out so that the satellite speakers don't receive information they're not meant to handle, which isn't going to be much. Now, the system's rated to be anywhere between 10 to 200 watts. And with my model of being 200 watts, we're going to power it with everything it can be powered with. The satellite speakers are going to be plugged directly to the monolith, so there's going to be no DSP. I'm actually going to run calibration, Odyssey. I'm going to run a full calibration with this system, and let's see what Odyssey thinks the system should be. See what it sets the speakers to, what it sets the crossovers, the levels. I'm really curious. Now this is where all the connections are made. You can see it's labeled right, center, left, surround left, and surround right. All the speakers are plugged into these ports here, and then the audio input comes from the receiver to the subwoofer itself. Now this is all fine and dandy and really easy to set up, but it kind of negates having small satellites when you have a whole bunch of cable management. I mean, just look at all the cables. It comes with all of them that you need because you're going to need both specific cables for the module 15. All of your wires are color coded so that it's easy and simple to install. But again, I'm going to completely bypass this and plug my speakers up directly to the wires that I was using with my first setup. This is basically what you can expect your subwoofer to look like once all the cables are made. So you can imagine how much cable management you're going to have to do behind your subwoofer and behind your entertainment center or wherever. It's just a big mess. To be honest, I'm not sure what to think. I'm not sure what to expect. Some people swear that Bose is really, really good for the money. Some people say they're overpriced and some people would never, ever buy them. So for me, I'm going to put all those opinions aside and I'm going to go in with an open mind. I'm going to give these guys a chance. Maybe they are really good for the size. Maybe they are a bang for your buck. Or maybe they're way overpriced and there's many, many things out there. I'm just going to go into it blindly and hope for the best. So guys, if this sounds interesting to you, make sure you stay tuned for each episode of this series. Every Wednesday will be a new part until we get to the final answer. Is Bose any good? Was it worth it? Spending two weeks with the Bose system.